in the Graham Hancock show, mm-hmm. the, the episode that you were in where you're explaining how they did the calendar and the different versions of the calendar and how they had individual names for each day for like 50 something years. That yeah. is that seems so confusing. I had to watch <laughs> it back like five times to understand it. You know, it really is confusing. I've been trying to figure it out for 30 years and there's <laughs> yeah. still things that are, there are still aspects of the Maya calendar, which confuse me mm. and their math too right like their their numerical system oh yeah uh, you know they it was well it was it wasn't more complex it was simpler right it was it was only there's only three characters is that right and in, in well I, I i'd use the word elegant, elegant. in that reg- okay. regard that they uh, they have a positional system of numeration like we do where we have you know the ones the tens the hundreds the thousands ten thousand so on mm-hmm. they do it by 20s but they only have three symbols. They have a bar, they have a dot, and they have a symbol for zero, which changes from a shell to a flower. Right. They, they, they can alternate. But we have 10 symbols. We have one through nine and then zero. Yes. And we can write any number as big as we want approaching affinity. They can do the same thing, but it's really only three symbols. So in that regard, it's more elegant. Yeah, but it's also people like, get pissed off when I say that their system was more sophisticated than ours. But <laughs> so, so let's let's go with elegant. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was it was more sophisticated though. Like the things they were able to calculate seemed kind of absurd compared to what we can do today, right? Like, like how what how is that responsible for these ideas of like different ages and periods of time and like these fifty two year epochs that they came up with? Like, how does that all tie together? Oh, that's a that's a very long answer. <laughs> <laughs> we got plenty of time. <laughs> no, you know, they we can see that their system begins with a foundation. First they have a counting system, which they decide is twenty, not mm-hmm. ten. You know, they're that's one proof that they're not being overly influenced by the old world. I mean, why would they come up with a completely different base system? Um from there they can count things and they start using it to count primarily the days. I mean, we know they're counting all sorts of things, probably in the market as well, but we see them counting the days and then they decide they want to make a year. They want to make a a cycle that they can talk about one year to the next, Mm. but they don't pick the solar cycle at first. Hmm. They they pick a number 260. That's their sacred calendar. Uh, It's called the Solkin or the Cholki, depending on who's language you're talking in, Mm -hmm. all of Mesoamerica does it, not just the Maya. It begins with the Maya or the Olmec, and then it goes everywhere in Mesoamerica until contact. So it's the most important one, but it's 260 days, no months, no weeks, just a combination of 20 symbols and 13 numbers. 20 times 13 is 260. Why that number? Why 260? Mm Mm-hmm. Best we can reckon, and what the Maya themselves today continue to say, is that it's the gestation period of human. It's nine months. So if you're impregnated on one a how, chances are your baby will come out on the next one a how. And I think it's beautiful that, uh, you know, instead of so many other cultures look to the heavens to to make time— But they decided to look inside themselves. Like, what is a cycle that is uniquely just us? We look around the world, you know, the sun's 365 days. You know, animals give birth on different time scales. We have this long, strange nine month pregnancy. Right. So they looked inside themselves. And from there, they built out the 365 day calendar. I think once they started to farm, that became a lot more important knowing the solar cycle, when to plant, when to harvest. So those two numbers, uh, a 365-day solar calendar and then their original 260-day calendar, when they put those two together like cogs uh, spinning into each other, you're only going to hit the same day every 52 years. So for 52 years, you'll have a unique day. It'll have one. The first part of it will be it's 260 day calendar name the Mm. second part will be the 365 calendar name but because the two cogs which they never made or envisioned that's for western minds to try to envision it Mm. the two cycles only meet up again at the same number every 52 years that's how we get 52 years 
Okay. you imagine how many generations it takes to do that? <clears throat> like you have to be, you have to have astronomers that are watching the stars daily, recording these things and then handing it down for generations. Well, no, no, not, yeah. not for this part. I mean, oh, well, one, sure, one sure, part's sure. human and one part's just the sun. Yeah, yeah. The, the, these are the low hanging fruit. The, the astronomy comes in when they make their next calendar. Sure, sure, sure. They make a, a like lunar the, calendar. The long count one, you mean? The long count is the really weird one. And my friend Chris Powell did his uh, dissertation or master's looking at that long count calendar and trying to figure out, is there an astronomical foundation? And really, as you go forward in it, all of the cycles of all the celestial objects they're looking at, the five planets and the moon and the sun, they just... the the amount of synchronicities that happen in the long count are crazy the farther you go up well even even very early is the surprising part you start getting these cycles that they're noticing like the number 584 it keeps coming up and up and up that's the synodic period of venus the number 780 is mars but that's 3 times 260 so that's a that's a frustrating one to me i can see the number 780, but I can never really say whether that's just three times the calendar or are they really looking at Mars. Yeah. In the Dresden Codex, we have proof because it goes in a bunch of groups of 780 days. And the guy that we identify as what my teacher called the Mars Beastie is hanging off of a sky band. So it's really like a blatant, this is my number. What is this? The Mars there's, what? There's a Mars. He's got kind of, he he looks kind of dragon-like. He, he's got kind of a crocodile face with an upturned nose. But he shows up as the hieroglyph of Mars in a number of contexts. Interesting. And in some of those contexts, it's not clear that he's Mars. But in the Dresden Codex, they make a whole almanac dedicated to Mars and showing it going 10 times in increments of 780 days. Oh, wow. Which is exactly... Can you find this, Steve? Yeah. That sounds it's interesting. Somewhere in I want to see what this guy okay, looks so like. Google Dresden Codex Mars. Dresden Google. Codex Mars. I think we'll okay. find a picture. Probably. Any luck, Steve? <laughs> anyway, the, the long count's weird. Yeah. Because it's their linear count of days. And they're really not linear people. They think in cycles. Oh, right, yeah. right. Okay. Here's it. There, there, is he, there he is. Left? Yeah. On the top left. That's top him. Left. This, 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 that, that, that one right there. Yeah. Zoom. Oh, there he is. See, oh. see his funny little face hanging off and he's got hooves too. He does. But he's hanging hooves. off of sky bands and the numbers over there to the left keep counting in increments of 780 days, 10 times. And they bracket him and they even, his face is in there somewhere. Yeah. That like. Right above the first of the, the hoofed guys hanging down, all three of them, the top right glyph is his face. Uh, that thing? Uh, yep, that's the one. Oh, with a ho he has a, a weird hooked nose, huh? Yeah. And that's, that's supposed to be Mars. That is Mars, yep. He's identified in a bunch of other uh, texts as well, but they don't always say... And he's associated with the number 780. Yeah. <laughs> so this gives us the context of who that guy is. And then we understand it better, like the like the text of Palenque talk about Mars. And when you go to the astronomy programs, he's actually sitting in the sky where uh, on the dates that they're talking about. That's so crazy, dude. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Palenque did this crazy thing where the the two farthest out planets, uh, Jupiter and Saturn, mm -hmm. they don't really work with the Maya or our calendar systems because they're exterior planets to us. Venus and Mercury are interior and they're, you know, in a tighter orbit than us around the sun. Yeah. Mars, just by weird coincidence, if if that's what it is, is three times 260. So it was easy for them to play the numerical games of adding Mars in. They kind of double dipped him every three times they went around their main calendar. But the other two were hard. The math didn't work because they do that retrograde motion as we see them. That there's a time where we're passing them that they actually look like they're going backwards in the sky, night mm. by night. They do a kind of a zigzag. But Palenque figured out how to incorporate them into the calendar by making kind of a parallel system we call the 819 calendar. 
And it's apparent that that was developed during the time of a king named Khan Balam, the son of Pakal. And he puts together these numbers. He's the first one to show us the 819 cycle in the cross group. And there's a date that shows up again and again and again in the texts of the Palenque, of the cross group that's, uh, that's not the day that the temples are inaugurated. They're inaugurated like a year and a half later. But if you look at the date they keep talking about, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn are in a really tight cluster in the sky that night, and all three of the temples of the cross group can see it. So it appears wow. that his math before he built the temples was like, this is the perfect day to inaugurate this this new calendar that incorporates those, and we need to make our opening date that day. But then just like in modern times, his contractors failed him. They were like, oh, that, but King, there's been so many days of rain, and have you seen the price of wood lately? We just can't, <laughs> we can't do it. And so a year and a half later is the inauguration date, but they keep talking about that date. And for a while we were like, why are they talking about that date? Until guys like me got access to modern astronomy software and we could actually run the numbers and go, well, what, what's happening on that day? 